Yeah. The funny part. <laughs> didn't get to laugh. I didn't guess. get to laugh. I laughed. She laughed. Yeah, but. No, don't say it. No, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it. I'm relating with my cigarette. That's that's the uh, word of art. I'm not going to relate with your cigarette in a second, too. I want a violent work of art. <laughs> what? Don't. You, you, give, you give me what, Martha? What? Yeah. Oh, see, now you're a pair. Now you're, you're above the... I'm unguilting you. I'm joining you in your... Uh... Pretty good for an asthmatic game. <laughs> so how many artists are there here? You write about it. <laughs> I disagree with you. I, I, I think a good piece of art has, has a soul, just like a human does. And that it doesn't need anyone. I don't. Yeah, but... It's, oh, but it, the things that you say are absolutely true, but how much of it is to do with the fact that the art market just labels and brands and mm. they are the one who set up all the, the, the perceptions that we have of that and criteria. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And, I kept and thinking. make it expensive and make it, you know, that yeah. it has to have a name and that it has to sort of hark back to, to something that's been going on since Italy in the 14th century or something like that. And, I kept thinking about the voice of fire as you were talking. Using that as an analogy, like it's. I don't know that was fine. Barnett Newman. Bought by the National Gallery for one point five million or something. Mm. And it's basically yeah. three stripes of color. Yeah. And when the uh, gallery bought it, there was outrage from all across Canada. You know, people saying, "Oh, I could have made that." Yeah. Um, people not. Getting a connection, obviously not getting a connection mm. with the work of art. Um, but you, you still make it yourself, even if some people don't relate to what you do all the time. I don't know. Right. I mean, for me, what what you well in regards to what Lynn, or oh, sorry, sorry, said is that but like why like I say it's like why I bring this up is because then for me it should be a choice. I know the art market is there, but it should be a choice of either sticking with it and then if you stick with it, then what do you do with it? As opposed to just passively, you know, never even once thinking about it. So that's more or less why I kind of bring this up. And I mean and also which kind of goes along with that is that the thing about Barnett Newman or people not understanding is like for me the whole problem with in the, the, the art the, uh, network if I can say is has nothing to do with art but has to do with education and that which is why I bring this concept of education it's like for me as long as like I say uh, we are taught um, by little squares and to fit everything, then people's experience, like they will come towards a work of art and expect to understand in the same way they should, they know when to stop at a red light and when to step on the gas. But personally for me, that's that's why I kind of end up, I say that for me, that for me has nothing to do with art. For me the experience of art is more, is an experience, it's a relationship. Um, so that, because of that, then there's this ghetto of artists, you know, or that we are pushed aside, or we're not, you know, how is, is that important for people to relate to, uh, you know, mass, uh, mass is a big word, but to a general public? I mean, is it nice to stay in an art ghetto? and make money out of it? Or is it actually 
for me it would be more interesting to actually broaden my experience to a broader public than just to you know make my money in rob kind of attitude. Um, I find maybe in relation to that in one in my first lecture, I don't know if I, I said it then, but when I say that for me, as soon as an artist brings his work in a public space, then his work, as soon as he brings it out of his studio, then his work has to do with communication. Because if he doesn't want to communicate, he might as well keep it in his studio. But what's the point of communication if you're not making sure the other person is going to relate to it or understand it? For me, that's a bit of a kind of a heritage of an attitude, like, oh, I'm myself alone in my studio, let me alone, I do what I want. And if you don't understand, it's your problem. Um, for me, as soon as the artist brings it into the public, he, in a way, is taking a responsibility of wanting to relate to people. Or don't you find that? Probably. How is it different for you then when you're making art in a public space? Uh, I mean, is it does that automatically mean that right off the bat you're trying to communicate? I mean, you're, well, resi it, it, you're in residence now. Your studio isn't a private space. Your studio is a public space. For for me, it is. Um, um, I mean, even before right off the bat, that my work has to do, is not has to do, but communication is an integral, integral part of my work. If I, would, if I didn't feel that I wanted to talk to people through my images, let's say, I just wouldn't bring it to them. And, and is, your, is your art making a does your art making have some things about it that are about breaking away from these eight conventions? Is it eight? Well, eight or nine, yeah, conventions. Um, well, I, th I think so. Um, okay, like, for example, I give these lectures. So for me, these lectures is part of the savants. So for me, the lectures is a step to try to. Um, you know, I find, I don't know, it's like, for me, it's natural that I should have a talk at my opening or you know, a slideshow or something like that. And different galleries, well, not that I've shown so much, but you know, I, when I started to show more as a so the artist, I was surprised that, to hear that few people did that. Um, why not? I don't, I mean, I don't see... Uh, it's like there's this, another mythology which I find uh, funny is that people are afraid of texts, often. So it's like they don't want to talk about their work or... Um, you know, I would see Let's say, not, say, not that maybe I will do it myself one day, I don't know. But I don't see why you wouldn't have an artwork and then a small text be beside it to go with it. Um, be, people say, well, it takes the magic away. It's going to destroy the work or things like that. But if my experience about that, if that look how many books are, are on uh, Van Gogh or on Rembrandt or all these famous artists, and even from a shitty representation, there's still something that comes true. And you know, so for centuries we've read so much about Picasso or Rembrandt. It doesn't matter. As soon as we see the work, there's something happening there. So for me, that's another again, there's this kind of scared attitude about talking about your work or having a text beside your work. I think also sometimes if you do a work and you don't understand it yourself, you can't very well talk about it.
you happen to do it, but it doesn't necessarily mm. mean that you understand why you did it mm. or where it came from. So how can you talk about it to the public? Well, but it's the whole, the, the whole mystique of, of, of doing a work of art anyway, and it's, um, sort of, when, when Whistler, when Raskin, John Raskin took Whistler to, to court, or no, Whistler took John Raskin to court for, to sue him for libel because of about what he said about the like paint pot had been thrown out of canvas or whatever. And they found out that that work of art had only taken them somewhere like six hours to, 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 to make the, to complete the work of art. Mm -hmm. Then it was, because it didn't take you know, weeks and days and months and whatever, it was it was it was seen as being less important. And so, if people make if artists make a work of art that only takes twenty minutes or, or something, it's and and people find out about it, then I think our perception is that it's not as important because it, because it was obviously so easy for that person to do that and it was like tossed off and you whatever. Know, or you see it in the the prices of photos, the prices of print, of print, as opposed to a unique, like a drawing, a painting, or a sculpture. And what did what did Dali do? Did he just what did he sign blank pieces of paper or something? Well, just before one, he died, like hundreds of mm, sheets of paper. That's far before he died. He shipped them off to a, an art school, and so that people had materials to work on. And the only condition was that they were shipped back, and then he sold them as his own work. Oh, okay. Cause, oh. So, because there's apparently still like this, this, these like pieces of paper with his signature on them floating around that are now being sent, you know, sold off, either with just the piece of paper with his name mm -hmm. on it, or else that, you know, people mm -hmm. are reprinting things on it and selling them for astronomical prices and so, You know that? It's, it, there's always so many ways to discount the whole. Well, I think what the point you uh, brought up, uh, Margaret, was also a bit, uh, again, for me, it's part of this mystique that our work of art must be understood. Like, um, what, let's, if we look at the society and what are the positive recommended behavior, you, know, you have to be strong, you have to be self-assertive, you have to be in control. So, uh, not knowing, which I think is basically life, because I think if your life is about only knowing, you'll get a pretty boring life. I mean, everything is set down. So, I think you're actually making a nice point, because I think this not knowing, but still able to make it, is what, you know, is about risk taking, and is about life in itself. But that is regarded as dirty or as bad. It's 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 bad to say I don't know. Um, I I could imagine having uh, you know like you say you don't know what it's about. And that's fine. But and but that experience is again part of the making of it. I don't you know it's like I don't say anything wrong about it. But given a a structured society which likes to have everything totally defined, they would call it wrong. But if we take that away, then not knowing is also very positive. And then it's also an experience you can share, uh, risk taking. I think they'd also call it amateur. They'd label it amateur if the artist couldn't explain what they did. Yeah. You know? they, they disqualify it because yeah. it's not allowed not to know. You have to know. Right, right. Um, it's again another one if we talk about the market again, because that's another reality. Like the prices of a print as opposed to a sculpture or painting. But there's also that an artist cannot change style. It's a boo boo. Mm -hmm. You must always do the same thing. Um, and for that, I have a kind of funny, sad example. It was this uh, uh, big. Uh, women American artists living in Holland, uh, Joe Bear, she 
was a minimalist of the 60s, a kind of silhouette type of painting. And, you know, she used to be quite big. And like she says, if she needs any money, she just has to go take any of her work in the storage and she gets $50,000, you know, just like that, no problem. But then in the mid-70s, she just changed totally that. And she went back into a kind of figuration, a kind of a mythology back to figurative, which actually a lot of people are doing now. Uh, and everybody was mad against her, her dealer was mad, you know, she, she became taboo, nobody touched her anymore. She could still sell high price her old work, but the new work, you know, she had even problems showing it. And the twist about that is that her son is Josh Bear, who has a Josh Bear gallery in New York. And even him didn't want to touch her work. Because, you know, it's like, you're not allowed to do that. So that, that again, is also... Um, and that's something that personally also played a lot with me. Uh, now I make uh, installation, which is multimedia in itself, but in my side presentation, you saw all the different uh, activities of means of expression I have. But, and that has always been looked down since it was very bad just because I didn't know what I was doing. So that's again is another um, ball and chain about you, know, you have to think twice if you're busy with the art market, if you want to change style or not. Seems to work. It seemed to have worked for her Town. town. Um, I don't know. Town? I don't remember make that I know the name. Yeah, he just died recently. He had mm -hmm. a lot of different styles and techniques. I mean, he did everything. He changed his style. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did get yeah. out of it. Excuse me. I mean, for me, that's why I think one of my artists that I really, um, how can I say, love a lot is Picasso. Because he just changed all the time, never really uh, changed. Uh, and then, for me, you have the scary side of being an artist, which people like uh, uh, Munch, for example, or Jones, as we see now, or um, uh, James Anser. Uh, yeah, uh, who for basically 10, 15 years was quite amazing, strong, and I always thought he what well, he died then, but he didn't. He just lived on, but he just never progressed. He never renewed himself. Um, yeah, because it's it's equally it's equally. But the people who change so many times, they don't have the or are, are like almost laughed at, but then the ones who like never, and I always talk about the 19th century, that's all I know about really, but the, um, like the people who, who painted with the pre raphaelites really late, like they came in really late, like 1880s, 1890s, but still, you know, during the, or by the, you know, the time of the First World War, like they were painting in the pre raphaelite style, and it's like, like, first of all, when they started, like, at the turn of the century or whatever, it had already been, like, 50, it was already 50 years old. And it was just so contrived by that time. Mm. So it's, you know, like, they're like, you know, they must have sold, because there must have still been an audience, but, but you just feel sort of mm. sad for them, that they, you know, it's, it's like, unfortunate yeah. they just didn't catch on with any of the really exciting things that were happening at the same time, and they just, you know, it's like, what stay in the security or just yeah. formula or and stagnate? And, and, and we, we sort of denigrate those people too, almost to the same extent as we do the ones who, you know, change, trying to find what they want mm. to do. And, and they're probably actually the more adventurous ones. The ones who keep changing to look for yeah. Unless they're like Kenny Rogers and they're just like looking for something that sells, mm. you know? Mm. <laughs> I'm funny. <laughs> I find it as, as someone who makes art, I mean, I, I would hate to think that I was joining on to um, something that was really exciting that was going on then. 
Yeah. I mean, what if you were one of those painters that came in at the end and that's what your passion and how you wanted to paint yeah. was? Yeah, it's so yeah. I mean, just, just to, oh, these really exciting things are going on and to slip into that. Yeah. What's the yeah, reality exactly. of that? Yeah. There's no you're reality right. of that. Yeah, you're right, because it is. It's, it's just, we just basically have to accept, accept what people are doing. And when I find that I make really huge jumps in my work, where all of a sudden I'm doing something totally different that I wasn't doing before, I find it a confusing element that eventually I somewhat understand, and then it jumps again anyway. So I don't really get a chance to to really even slow down to sort it out. And when you talked about not about the work that you don't understand. I mean, well, I've been in, sitting in a, a body of work, producing a body of work, and sitting in the amongst of all the thoughts that are going on in that body, and all of a sudden, I understood what two bodies of work ago was about. Mm. I mean, I rambled like hell when I was producing that work about what it was about, and what I thought it was about, and what I was trying to do with it. And all of a sudden, I went to this, and went in, and I'm thinking, well, that wasn't about that at all. But I believe back when I was saying that this work was all about this, that maybe it was all about that. Yeah, yeah. You'd have to give yourself some distance. And I mean, for me to even talk about distance from my work is hilarious because it's been, I mean, I'm a baby as far as being an art maker goes, right? So it's, who's to say I've had any distance from any of it? One thing I question, though, and this is something I want to bring up, because you mentioned it before in one of your lectures, that more and more you want to get into video. And I've seen, I haven't seen many. I've only seen a few, but I've seen them here. And after about 10 seconds. Oh, I agree. I am bored out of my yeah. mind. I've had enough. And yeah. it's a, a piece of art, whether it's sculpture or, or something hanging on the wall, a person can stop and look and keep going. With yeah. video, you're stuck. You're there. And it's not like a Hollywood film. It's not the same thing at all. Because I think Hollywood films are more targeted to markets. Or there's a certain formula. They're predictable. They follow certain standards so you can, you're already set up to enjoy yeah. it or not enjoy it or whatever. But with video, as in painting or anything else, it's so highly personal that after a while I find it's just the artist's e ego is yeah. overwhelming, yeah. you know? Yeah. But I don't know why that is. I don't think it has to do with the fact that it's so personal. I think it has to do with the fact that there's not been a video artist yet who's actually made something that's that challenges the the medium. They're right. caught in between the I want to make a Hollywood film, but I, I don't want it to be a Hollywood film, I want it to be deep. So you get all this, I mean I, th I think as a viewer looking at video art, it's a, it's still a different situation because it's not, a, it's not about all the things that we're used to thinking about, about right. looking at art. I mean it's, it's more about a communication and a message because it's ongoing. I mean, it's going to talk to you more. Yeah. But I, I haven't, I haven't seen on, mm. on a personal basis any Strong. video that I would actually find actually yeah. challenges mm. the medium and works at the same time works with the medium. Mm -hmm. Well, I was fortunate in Europe to see a kind of small retrospective of uh, Nam Jun Paik. Yeah, and before I saw his work, I kind of, he makes video, he makes these, these days he makes robots of old TVs with videos and then, um, what did I see one of his work? Oh, I was Detroit, it's not far. Um, anyways, he's been, he was working with John Cage in the 60s. Uh, performance and video, and 
anyway, if you ever get a chance, for me, he is the one who made me appreciate that video can be an art form, can be a strong because he really kind of takes it apart totally. Well, it's not that I don't think it can be an art form. I've just not seen any that actually I. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Oh, I agree. I think the problem with video is the same as maybe when when photography was introduced. It's like with photo, you didn't need to be a painter. Click, it's done. Art, instant art. It's like as soon as you make performance, the first thing you do is you take your clothes off. And as soon as you make video, half the time, the first thing you do is you take your clothes off also. Um, so there's this kind of, because it's instant, it permits you to do things un uncrafted, unresolved, un it's just kind of spitting right out on the canvas, you could say. Uh, I, I do have to to say that yeah. the maybe the old painters were stuck into very uh, strict structure about imagery and stuff like that, but they had to learn how to paint. And it's like one of the uh, Zen thingies and say like the preparation is as important as doing what you do. And I think the mm -hmm. skill of learning how to paint is one way you fall in love with your medium. And one way that you then you will respect it to a certain point. It's and I think video in that way is too young. And it's too instantaneous. You don't need to have any mental, physical, or any kind of skills to manipulate the video. But also, I, when you said that, I was thinking of specific scenes. We've all seen specific scenes in movies that we're no longer looking at what's happening in the scene. We're looking at how we're shot and we're amazed. Because you know, like a two-second scene can be so artistic, just the camera angle, mm. whatever. Mm. I think, yeah, that's for me is one of the major problem with video is that, like I say, art is about communication, and I think it's quite uh, not thought about that the attention span of people is about, I don't know, five 15, seconds long. Fifteen minutes. Minute attention span yeah. of people? No, I think it's five seconds long. Like, you look at something and if it doesn't grab you, you're gone. That's it. And for me, that's what happens with video. Uh, I did one video so far, and my experience is that, and it's eight minutes long, and people had to bow with it. It was funny. Um, and when I, for personally, when I say. Maybe that needs to be one of your other. Misconceptions. Oh, yeah. Is that is that art shouldn't be funny? Art can't be funny. Art can yeah. be. Well, I talked about it. The about ceramics. Yeah, art should be serious. Mm -hmm. Well, you can still get away with it if you're a good painter or yeah, a good but sculptor. It's nice, it's, it's, yeah. I have to be really honest. I I can't bring to mind funny art. Funny art. You need to have it, but it, but. It's, no, not you funny art, it's funny art. You need to have a sense of humor. I mean, I think it's one of those. <laughs> <laughs> That's a terrible thought. And I don't. What? And I don't. You don't what? Have a sense of humor? Yes, you do have a sense of humor. I mean, I just, I think that it is probably, okay. should be one of your bits as well, because I, I mean, I just don't know funny art. You don't know about people but who make funny art. I've looked at a hell of a lot of art, more probably, I've looked at more art than I've read anything, I, and I, I, I can't bring a piece of mind that's still not art. It has to be like comic art that makes you like, that, that makes laugh you laugh out, at right? it, but I think that the, the art making process of the artist has to have a sense of humor about, to a certain extent about mm -hmm. what they're doing, so it's not so deadly serious that, um, I, can't, mm -hmm. I can't think of an example, but well, I just want to say, Picasso is funny, and, and James Ensor has some funny caricature. Caricatures, yeah. I mean, yeah. Jesus yeah, coming even, to but Brussels. Even so, just the whole, I mean, the whole process of making the art can't be so deadly serious that you don't have a sense of Mendelssohn Joe. Well, if, if, it's also if you, I mean, I've dealt with ceramics before, and in ceramics, oh, right. there's a lot, a lot, a lot of humor. So for me, then I can conceive of it quite easily, but maybe that's 
because I have that. Uh, I'm not saying that I, I can't conceive of it. No, no, but, but you're just looking what, what I'm you just have saying seen. that it doesn't fall into what's considered art. When it starts to be funny, it's not. Well, there's William Wegman. Wegman. Photograph who works with his dogs and makes video with his dog, Max Ernst. His dog's name Max Ernst? Yeah. You see, I, I don't know of that work and oh. come pull anything that's historical. Hmm? Pull anything that's historical. Well, he's, I mean, he's still alive. He's making bad videos now. <laughs> he's lost his touch. But, uh, Panamarenko, yeah, but you can, this Belgian guy. See, I just, I just yeah. don't think if you, if you even back up into... I mean, we can all pull obscurities that answer every one of the questions of, yes, well, this is, maybe here it is here, though. But I think in what's terms that are it's constantly really looked at, like there's just... That. There's not a lot. No. I mean, no. I remember no. when I saw your slides of the, of the tools in the bed, and, and the, the words that you were saying, and about funny art, and, and more than anything, what I remember was Dominic in the back corner losing himself consistently, like he just couldn't <laughs> hold on, <laughs> and trying, and, 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 it was, and it was funny for him. I mean, it, it, that particular piece wasn't funny for me, but, it, but you were so right that it just lessened it as being art. I mean, people just didn't take it as being uh -huh, art. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I saw the throng of chairs as being really funny. That's the one that made me laugh. The wrong chairs? Yeah, the, chair show. the flock of chairs. Oh, when everybody was... Uh, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. And then all the sudden chairs. chairs. And that yeah. just hit, struck me as very funny. Mm. I don't know if it was oh, intended to be, but it made to laugh at very hard places. I mean, that's what I like about dog. I still wonder when you say all of the things that you say, or, why it is that you put work in galleries and why it is that you make work. Well, because your thoughts sound on the outside to be about some sort of not acceptance of all of that, yet you still do it. And there, yeah, but uh, okay. I, 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 for one, don't see a contradiction. Maybe don't. Um, uh, I'm not... Like I, like I said, for me, what the point is, is to bring these for me exist, and the point for me is to bring them to our awareness, so that at least you have a choice of working with them or not. I find that most of the time, if you don't know them, you don't even have a choice, of, and then you don't know how to manipulate choice. Like for me giving lecture is one part of it. Um, another point is that, you know, there's, you know, uh, I don't know, one of these, so many expressions, but like if you can beat them, join them. But not necessarily what I want to say, but um, you will have much more effect making a change from within the system than from outside the system. To be an outsider, that's a very easy, you say, ah, not for me. But actually when you do that, you're actually playing in the hands of that system. Because the, yeah. the, the, the winos and the people who have no money in the streets exist because of how the society is built. They're not a contradiction. We create our pores. And we support our pores. So it's not a contradiction. Uh, so for me, it would be uh, bad to say, to just take the position of the anarchist or marginal, because for me that doesn't do anything. And if I do that, I actually strengthen the system, because that's a position they have created for me. So I think that it's more interesting to play within the system and through discussions like this, through the lectures I give, and through contact with people, um, see what is the possibility. Mm.
But then you also show a slide of a chair on the ceiling yeah. where you're totally not accepting the system. No, I'm not I mean, saying I'm not, I'm not saying it's no, I'm not totally there. not accepting it because I'm still here and I'm still in the art gallery, I'm still showing it. The point that I'm actually if you could if you noticed you know, like a case in point, there was the chair on the ground and there was the chair on the ceiling. Both were there. So actually I'm saying is and that's a bit again uh, the discussion that we had in Denise home. Like I'm talking about the plurality, and I don't see it that I have to choose one or position. Okay. So maybe my question to you is then why don't you also produce whatever it is that you want to call what it is that you produce and not put it in gallery? Okay, because. As well as yeah, yeah, yeah. produce yeah, yeah. Well, and putting it in a gallery. This is an uh, ongoing process, and doing this lecture is one way for me to attempt mm -hmm. different ways. Um, also, my uh, first example of the Malevich Italian guy whose things get burned is that okay, I can do go do some street theater, can make an installation with no publicity whatsoever, but. By definition of this thing, it doesn't exist. So then I will be making things that don't exist. I know it's a contradiction, but for me it's a reality. It's like, for now, there's this system which decides what exists and what not exists. So for me to work outside of there, what I will make will not exist. So I have to find, and I don't say I have a solution, I think if I have a solution, uh, my life would be boring because then I would know my solution. But I see it as an attempt to become aware of what are the limitations and why do I have to show in places like this. And given that as a starting point, because if I don't use that, 